Welcome to all new subscribers on this pirate ship of the mind where NFTs are celebrated and not dismissed. Artist Journal, January 10th, 2023. Broadcasting to the world from Berlin, Germany. My name is Adrian Pocabelli. It is a true pirate ship out here. <laughs> uh, thank you again for the great response we got yesterday again on Twitter. So the enthusiasm is contagious and we're seeing it. I mean, what a strange time it is. I was looking and we're going to see the article here. Like I missed it. Maybe a lot of you guys saw it like super rare cutting back on a third their staff. I mean, this is not uncommon these days with the economy kind of tightening up. It's kind of an opportunity for people who have overhired to reduce their staff without it being seen really as that bad. Um, but it, it's such a weird market because, I mean, we see here with this Delta Sauce work, I mean, let me break out my calculator. It's pretty astonishing what happened here. This is an open edition. Probably, probably a lot of you guys saw this, but for those who haven't, uh, let me just get my calculator here. So there were 664 of these of comfort that were sold of this open edition. And we'll look at the mechanics here in a second. 664 times 0 0.075, 49.8 ETH times, and ETH is doing pretty good. Let's just call it $1,300, which I think is a low ball. Are you ready? $64,740 was raked in by Delta Sauce in eight hours. So pretty amazing. Of course, this is an AI art piece and uh, just a kind of soothing interior here. Comfort. Nice title. Nice work. Nice light and everything. Uh, an eight hour open edition with one burn event happening in January to redeem relax. So this is a, you know, just from a purely uh, market pragmatic perspective, this is a pretty smart thing to do. I believe Charles AI and others did the same thing. This idea of you can, you know, buy several so that you have enough for the burn event. And what I also thought was quite smart it doesn't specify how many additions you need to uh, make the burn. Uh, so maybe it's one for one, an eight hour open edition with one burn event happening. It's ambiguous. So maybe you think, oh, I better buy five because it's cheap too. And I could probably still sell it on secondary is what people are thinking. Uh, but I don't know, actually, like it's going to be interesting. I mean, we saw a tweet yesterday and I'm going to move on here pretty quickly, but we saw a tweet yesterday about, remember it was the, that crypto punk guy who was saying, uh, you know, this will be seen like Pearl Jam mixtapes and whatever, because you do wonder how much they're going to retain their value because we see a lot of additions say on Tezos. Of course, this is on Ethereum. I mean, 0.075. Uh, ETH is like if ETH is at, you know, $1,300, let's say this is probably around $100, 0 0.075 ETH, I would guess around 100 bucks. Okay, so are you going to get 100 bucks? It's an interesting thing, but maybe you'd use it to get relaxed anyway. A stunning sale. So, I mean, I think just the juxtaposition of super rare kind of scaling back a bit. And again, all big tech firms. So it's, you know, there's nothing. It's kind of like from their perspective, it's probably quite pragmatic as well to reduce staff at this point. If you're going to reduce, if you have overhired, which a lot of people did. Uh, so it doesn't necessarily say too much about, you know, super rare's market. And we're going to look at the super rare bot here in a second. So anyways, but that is going on. And simultaneously, like one artist, you know, this is probably an AI piece. Obviously, you know, Delta Sauce put together who knows how long it took and rakes in again, rakes in $65,000 rounding up $64,740 in eight hours. So a stunning sale here. 
Delta sauce. I have absolutely no words for what happened today. And that's U.S. for all you Canadians out there. I wish I could personally hug every single one of you. I have nothing but the utmost gratitude for every single person I've met in this space. Over 650 plus minted in eight hours. So yeah, so congrats to Delta Sauce. I made a sale, <laughs> not 668 at 100 bucks, but thank you to the anonymous collector who picked up an 8-bit nature series. Uh, there are not many left. I guess there are four left. Um, so anyways, just thanks to this anonymous collector here. And I just thought I brought up their collection here, which I thought was pretty interesting because uh, I looked and look at what they're collecting. Like this kind of speaks to this whole idea of uh, of uh, sparse sparseness, uh, how the easy pickings, the collecting is starting to be uh, there's slim pickings. That is what I'm trying to say here. So interesting, Axin, Zancan. Again, I'm seeing it more and more. Like, I think it's too much to call it a stampede, what's going on in the market. But I really do get the sense that things, ironically, are really ramping up. And we've seen it in NFT volumes on OpenSea as well. So to me, this collector here, and shout out to this collector who has I, I love this hotel room piece uh, series by Gloomtube. Uh, you know, I feel like a lot of people are getting the message here. Uh, shout out to Joe Rogan's dad, who actually just released this piece, the, what I call the baklava, the balaclava agenda, uh, who just released this JRD, Joe Rogan's dad, on Object yesterday. He is going to be co-hosting uh, with me tomorrow, the Twitter Spaces, on Wednesday, uh, at 9.30. I see my image is kind of freezing up a bit. I have not much time today, though, so we're just going to go with it. I may freeze up a bit here. Um, Joe Rogan's dad is going to be co-hosting tomorrow on uh, Twitter Spaces with me, and there's a big agenda. And actually, let me just bring up the tweet here. Uh, we have a great agenda here. Uh, weekly Salon uh, to discuss AI and disclosure. Should people who are doing using AI in their work uh, disclose it, which is kind of an interesting debate. I mean, I'm such a kind of laissez-faire art making that I'm sort of like, you know, maybe part of the art is to not disclose, you know, like, uh, so th I think it's an interesting question, though, because it's come up a lot. Uh, of course, the digital versus physical debate. So this is all from the collector's perspective here. ETH versus Tez. Crypto as the currency rather than stable coins and more. Same time, same place. So last one was fabulous. We're already getting quite a nice response here. I put this out an hour ago. Uh, so I'm excited. So anyways, I hope you are too. And I hope to see you. And I'm going to start doing everything I can for those people that come on stage. I'm still, you know, just trying to, I'm a terrible multitasker. Uh, but what I would like to do is if artists are coming on stage, I ask them, you know, briefly what they're up to and then maybe put up a link uh, so i'm still working out the mechanics of that of, of one of their things or you know just so that people who are listening can actually check out what they're doing and a kind of reward for kind of contributing to the show so if you're trying to get your work out there there is another opportunity for you in this very rich space this space is I mean, as someone who has kind of lived and breathed in the art scene here in Berlin, in the contemporary art scene, this scene is a wealth of opportunity, and you must take advantage of it. Uh, who knows how long it lasts? Maybe it lasts for a decade. Maybe it lasts for another three months. We just don't know. Uh, quick comment from Martin Baldwin. Martin, thank you for the comment. This is <laughs> this is a yeah, because uh, a lot of people probably aren't. Sure, what we mean, what I mean by the big throwdown. I keep hearing the phrase, the big throwdown. What do you mean by that? I'm a newbie. By the way, keep up the excellent work. Thank you, Martin, and thank you for watching. And, you know, one of the greatest things I hope that this program does is get people who are outside the space watching and getting exposed to what's going on here. Because, uh, yeah, like I, I think it's, I kind of love, again, we just blew through 400 subscribers here. I kind of love how small it is though still like this is underground 400 people you know and for me this is a lot of people uh, but it's exciting 
in the sense of, you know, this is, uh, you know, and there are other people, obviously, who understand what's going on here. But I mean, I'm just saying this is rarefied uh, space. So anyways, the big throwdown, what we are talking about here, if you go to the ep two episodes ago, there was an episode called The Big Throwdown. And you'll see a tweet there by Robness V2 that is basically saying, uh, back in August, I, I dug up this tweet that basically said, uh, he was basically saying the way that art became worth a lot of money on the Ethereum blockchain were a couple of collectors or a few collectors just started throwing down what he was calling the big throwdown uh, for, for works that they just had to have. So all of a sudden they're paying $100,000 or more for works that they had to have. And he basically said, that's what happened on ETH and it's also going to happen on Tezos. Okay. And so... What my question is now is with Uxine, uh, his huge success, and, and as I was just saying with this anonymous collector is just like kind of symptomatic of what's going on here. I, you know, what I'm calling, I, I don't want to call it a stampede because that sounds like call it saying a fire in a movie theater. But I do personally, when I collect, you know, artist collector here, when I collect, I am feeling an, an increased urgency to kind of lock in what you can get while you can. Okay. So it's, and someone put out a tweet yesterday, like something seems to be happening on Tezos. And I agree. I totally agree. So, and maybe it's just the low Tezos prices. People are just going, if not now, when? So that is what we're talking about with the big throwdown is Tezos, which is a much cheaper blockchain for buying art. Is it starting to... Are collectors starting to, you know, throw down? That's what we're talking about. Are they starting to spend more money? Are things about to change? Thank you for the comment. Uh, Runetune, uh, with an interesting comment. And yes, on from a couple of shows ago. Uh, I am anti-anyone against the use of the word product. So I was mentioning, sometimes I talk about art as a product. Okay. And Runetune is saying... And, and sometimes I get flack for calling it a product, like, no, it's not a product, it's an art piece and whatever. Runetune is basically saying he's anti anyone who's against calling it a product to talk about a work of art. It is a product whether you like it or not. We can't be too precious or we get nowhere. I totally, yeah, I mean, I guess we're agreeing, but I totally sympathize because there is kind of an over mystification of art in my from my perspective and the, the magic of art and even the magic of the avant-garde is it's real so when art really works it is like magic you know i remember seeing einstein on the beach by philip glass and robert wilson in toronto and i like to me it's like there's nothing like seeing the real avant-garde okay and then it was like that was awesome or if you see you know raphael you know uh, the deposition in uh, the Borges, not the Palazzo Borges, but the Borges collection or whatever it's called in Rome, real world magic. We've discussed this on this show previously. So it exists, but at the same time, with that being said, people can be too precious. I totally agree. And, you know, as if it's all this, you know, magical. To me, that undermines the real magic of art. You know, what we're talking about here with the, you know, Einstein on the beach and Raphael, there is a real magic here. That is the astonishing thing about art. And so we don't need to over mystify. In, in fact, it's kind of even better to demystify because to me that augments the real magic that exists. That's why I'm in this business. OK, there's something going on. Okay, like it's astonishing. So continuing on, every artist has a process and the result is a product of the process. Product. Say it with me, there's no reason to be offended. So Runetune with a big opinion here and that's why we love him and we welcome him back next week on the Twitter Spaces. And he is an outstanding co-host. Now, a little bit of concern here from Charles AI. Someone around here has been successfully stealing my work for months, and I don't know what to do about it. Good morning. So this was, and then someone was kind of wanted more details here. Uh, st stealing as in minting your work 
And then he said, no, using image to image. So I've never heard of this a little bit of alpha here, I assume. Uh, I've never heard of image to image to, uh, to copy the style, color, shade work. So maybe that's like a, a way of like, we've seen this. Remember with Strange Thing, there was the guy who was making the works really similar to Strange Thing. But to his credit, he, you know, gave homage to the king and then did a homage to Strange Thing. So he wasn't secretive about it. Um, but this is kind of a, I don't think it's a black and white issue because a, the nature of AI art, from my perspective, is, and I think it's kind of objectively true, it uses other sources, right? And we, again, previously discussed this as the, uh, the barriers to entry, or, you know, like that the barriers to entry to AI, are they too, is it too easy to kind of come out of nowhere? We've seen EdgeQ within a few weeks is making some pretty interesting AI art. That's kind of the promise of AI art. But the flip side of it is people can kind of take what you've done and run with it. I don't know if that's a bad thing. Like, I'm not sure. I mean, if you're going to like the sampler, it's kind of a sampler ethos AI to a certain degree. We're saying, I mean, can we criticize uh, what were they called? The, the, you know, the guys who were doing the fantasy art, art station. Can we criticize art station and then say, oh, but nobody should be copying me? I don't think we can and be consistent. So, yeah, I just think it kind of this rebrings up this whole issue of authorship and AI. And I'm kind of have a pretty radical view that I think it's kind of open season and fair game at this point, And that if people can basically convince the market to buy their work, even if it's adopted from yours, as long as, because the market will say, if it's too close to your work, the market will say, this is an imitation. This exists in the normal art world, you know, but if you're able to tweak it enough where it's kind of your own thing, then is it just like a trend? And do you own that trend, even if you're the first person to make it? And would it have happened anyways without you? Hard to say, right? But anyways, so to me, sampler ethos is a sampler ethos. And it's kind of a live by the sword, die by the sword. But we love, don't get me wrong. We, I absolutely love Charles AI. He's a very nice guy. He actually offered to come to a spaces before we started the spaces. Unfortunately, it's while he works. Um, but anyways, it'd be great to actually get him on a discussion like tomorrow, wouldn't it? But he's probably working. Uh, so anyways, uh, maybe the real alpha here, though, is the image to image. <laughs> Heads up, everyone. Continuing on. Uh, this was just the super rare tweet, and I can't read all this. Uh, otherwise, I will not make it to the gym today. And uh, so I am not going to read all this. But the first... Uh, with the takeaways in the first sentence here, this is super rare John. Uh, I am saddened to share the news today that we have parted ways with many valued friends and colleagues at super rare labs, a staff reduction of about 30%. So I was mentioning this in the opening here. And basically they said they overhired like every other tech firm. So I just thought this is a really interesting contrast by what we saw with Delta sauce in our opener there. And I thought we could take a look at the super rare bot and I, I say not bad. It's not like the sales have dried up. Look at this. Uh, Botto Project, uh, artwork by the Botto Project, which I believe is AI uh, robot, $10,000. Uh, and then here, $5,000 three hours ago, four hours ago, 662, you know, 257. So you're not seeing the same kind of prices. And I actually brought this up here. Yuri J sold his work. I think like, again, you know what's so weird with the slim pickings on Tezos and like how, you know, you get the sense that everything's kind of being cleaned out. ETH, for the first time, like in my, while well, I've been paying attention to NFTs, ETH is looking attractive. Isn't that interesting to get like a one of one from Yuri J for 464? I was looking at Yuri J's work on object. The Tezos works are 150 Tezos, so maybe that's 120. You see what's going on here? So that ETH premium, it's almost like it's starting to collapse a little bit, perhaps. So 
I think this is super interesting, what's going on here. And this is a good sale. I mean, it's still more than uh, Yuri J is going to get on Tezos. And again, it's important to move work. I'm going to do a big repricing of everything. <laughs> Hopefully move some of my super rare work again. Uh, so anyways, uh, you know, half an ETH. So business isn't terrible over here, but if they're only getting 10% of smaller sales, it is hard to pay everybody through the DAO. Like, I mean, it's, it's nice, but I wonder if Super Rare was kind of banking on these huge, you know, if guys like Xcopy don't make work, uh, you know, and sell for 500,000 or $200,000, that's kind of important revenue for Super Rare if they're getting 10% or whatever the amount is. So if crypto artists, you know, quote unquote, the traditional 2021 crypto artists like Coldy, et cetera, uh, people, uh, if they're not minting on super rare, uh, that hurts super rare, doesn't it? So it's interesting. Maybe that's why they had that huge onboarding in the fall, in November there, where we saw a ton of Tezos artists uh, were onboarded. And just finally here, uh, I want to keep this episode as short as possible, which is always a challenge. So this is the NFT marketplaces from uh, DAP Radar, and it's actually quite interesting. So OpenSea, Blur, you kind of have to take with a bit a grain of salt because there's a lot of wash trading going on right now with people who are trying to uh, get the uh, airdrop. So um, forgive my camera there. I see it's kind of uh, freezing up a bit. But this is what I want to point out. Look at Object, $1.18 million in volume. This is in the last 30 days. And you know what's so interesting about this? This is the last 30 days. And you know, on object, you know, art is selling for a dollar, sometimes less. Whereas on super rare here, it's doing basically a little less than half at 492,000. Let's just call it 500,000. And they're much more dependent on these kind of bigger sales. So I don't know if that means anything but i think the real takeaway for me is look at how well object is doing and i think it to me it, uh, the super rare takeaway for me is super rare will probably do even better like in a bull market super rare will probably go back on top of object but in a bear market they'll probably be hit more like they probably have more volatility uh so anyways just kind of an interesting look at rareable uh, up here, I'm not sure what to make of that because when I make a sale on object, I get an email from Rarible and I'm not sure if they consider that a sale on their platform. So anyways, enough of this stuff. Let's get to the art. Uh, so uh, Kurt Hustle Collective have released an open edition. Buy your time, 1-900-1997-900. And so this is available for another three days. Five have been minted for 0 0.1997. So pretty reasonable price here from our very good friend, Kurt Hustle Collective, whose art we absolutely love and find hilarious. Uh, here is more uh, Spuggles Meskinen uh, with a nice piece on foundation. So again, he just made an ETH sale the other day, I believe. And here's another one, 0.935 ETH on January 9th, yesterday, shortly after minting. So, you know, another kind of what I'd consider normally a Tezos artist, uh, he's been on foundation for a while, though. Anyways, he's doing really well, uh, you know, playing at ETH every couple of days here. Here was another work. Now, this, this is from August 19th, okay? This was listed. So this I just kind of brought up to show. This is from last year, August 15th. So obviously, he's been on ETH for a while here. Did a nice sale, 0.6 in 2021. That was probably a hell of a lot, a lot of money. Heck of a lot of money. Now it just went for a reserve of five. So all to say, and this is actually a super cool piece, um, all to say, uh, Spoggles Maskinen, who made this fantastic work here, uh, he's doing really well. And you, you gotta love like the retro uh, mobile phone with the uh, awesome kind of blue pixels coming out of it. Continuing on, so continuing with our kind of market theme today, Uxine, last, since our last discussion here, since our last show, look at what's happening to Uxine's uh, market here. So let's just load it up. This is all in the last day, by the way. So, you know, 7045, these are for like editions of 321. Uh, and then some nice sales here, 369 Tezos for an edition of 25. 
uh, 200 for an addition of 33. And what else do we see? 750 for this work, uh, addition of 13, 1,024. Again, this is all in the last day for this work. Uh, 555, 17 hours ago, 750, 669. So this is what we're talking about with a big throwdown, Martin. Uh, 1,111, 1,200, okay, for editions of 10 and 11. These are sales, okay? So this is what we're talking about. Is this the big throwdown that's starting to occur here? Um, so anyways, more, 600. So, you know, pretty impressive uh, sales here. And I just put from offers high to low, and you get the sense this one of one here for 6,900 is probably going to get snapped up here. I'm guessing. I don't know. And I'm not suggesting anybody should. What I wanted to point out were the offers, though. So 1,200, uh, 1,100. These are for one of ones. But look at this. 750 for this edition of 11. 566 not being taken. 560, 469. You're starting to see it across. Look, 300, 300. So... Pretty impressive. And sometimes you'll see offers come in for like 1,200 and then just disappear really quickly. People are moving around. So anyways, uh, the excitement continues on Uxine's page, which I go to like, if I'm ever bored, I just load up Uxine's page to see what's going on and watch with fascination. Uh, so here's that work by Yuri J, which we looked at uh, about a month ago or whenever it was minted. Really nice work, again, I think this person got a deal here with $463 for a nice one of one by a very interesting experimental artist, The Art of Vindictive Cookery, even a great title there. So, you know, puts in the bid, makes the reserve, walks away with it. A new work by Myth. So following just that other work that was released the other day, and again, you get that crazy wild sky here. Uh, Nowhere Man, interestingly, Rubber Soul, I couldn't help but think maybe he's watching the show still. And awesome, just beautiful work. Uh, Doom, Dr. Doom, the whole thing. So he's taking offers, kind of surreal, like the masks, everything about it, the brushwork here. The massive hands almost remind me of Jack Kirby, the 1960s comic artist, uh, the dollar bill, all his stuff, symbols and surrealism. So he's taking the top 10 offers uh, later today. So basically... Four, six, eight, ten. You're basically not getting it for less than 27 Tezos. So that is happening today. So best of luck with that one, Myth. Beautiful work. Uh, Mota MT and Kappa Sage put out a collaboration. Kind of a wild work. So you can see Kappa here with all the mayhem as usual. And then this looks like Mota MT. And Mota MT looking with fascination and everything. And so anyway, it's just kind of a wild work and there looks like Moda MT. You gotta love the freedom, which we also saw in Myth there, the freedom of composition that these artists are taking. Like it's very reminiscent of surrealism and just using these kind of architectural structures as kind of framing devices. And you know, where they're not even worrying about this being a real, you see like this is, this is outdoors over here, but this is indoors. What building ever is like this? So really interesting experimentation here in the compositions. Uh, we don't have time to go through all this, but I did want to highlight it. Rare, also known as Rare Force One, uh, he showed some of his earlier works where he kind of came out of, and of course he does the Boston Dynamics dogs. And so just showing this kind of lust and consume, uh, this kind of interesting kind of consumerism critique that he was doing in his painting last year. He was getting, using Louis Vuitton purses and skulls and other stuff. So you can go through the whole thing you know, there's a purse on a woman's body and everything. So just really cool uh, right up there from Rare Force One if you're looking for more. So I know a lot of people like his work. Cool work by Treza Rodanx. Again, this happened on the day the first telegraph line was put up. So there's always kind of some humor, seemingly. Of course, the artist that does the Failed Artist series, which I absolutely love. Uh, and here you kind of see the humor again. Uh, with the shoes on the first telegraph line, buy for two, edition of 10. A nice kind of, you know, I don't know if you'd call it a still life, but it's just a nice piece. 
So I have included it here. And also Human Kernel with another one of one. And shout out to Human Kernel for the nice tweet yesterday. Fever in the back of my head. And of course, this is part of the one of one kind of anti-PFP project where there's just a ton of experimentation. And it seems to me like the idea with the anti... And correct me if I'm wrong out there. Uh, but it seems to me that the idea with the anti-PFP is to basically make uniques and to make everyone kind of different. Uh, uniques in the sense of using a unique style. Uh, you know, so here's a different kind of digital processing. There's some pixelation, but it's different from the last one. Some crazy, uh, you know, digital painting mixed in. So anyways, just continuing to be very, very interesting in that part of Tezos. <laughs> what I call the undiscovered country of Tezos. Antonio Loves, who we start to look at almost from the beginning, is doing very well, a one of one of his super interesting kind of illustrative work here. Uh, this sold for, I think it was, it was over 200, 350, was it 350? Okay, no, offers, the current offer is for 350 and not accepted yet. So Antonio loves and the one of one, he's doing fabulous here, uh, really playing the market very well and uh, really developing very quickly a collector space. Nice take on uh, St. Michael, I believe it was. St. Michael, the archangel. You know, uh, I have a piece there. Yeah, kind of like you see it, in, see it in Raphael. Classic sort of piece, a modern take on it. You always got to love that. Uh, Bidala who I don't know if we've ever looked at before uh, on object, and I'm not gonna load up the page because my computer is protesting a bit here, uh, but interesting. I think I've seen some of these patterns that she's done before and now incorporating it into these figures has a bit of a contemporary art feel to it, doesn't it? So editions of 10, and there are already quite a few offers in, howdy doody, on the scene. And so there you go. So there's obviously a lot of demand for this. Uh, Bambon dress and black duck. Uh, this is an interesting artist that we started looking at. Uh, so this is on Form Function, which is, of course is on Solana. This sold out. And we looked at one of this artist's work before, Ramenya. And let me just, kind of has a bit of a Japanese feel to it. Interesting composition. Just hugging the, the bottom of the, of the frame here. Kind of sounds like the New Year's uh, ode, but different, kind of with an Asian feel to it. So anyways, interesting, sold out, nine editions. I don't know what it sold for, 10. So like a hundred bucks each, maybe a little more. So nice work, Ramenya. Uh, Dexter. Now this is interesting. Third my piece, third piece on of a new style. So it's always kind of uh, courageous for artists to do this, and good for him. Uh, so interesting. Kind of reminds me of that uh, very famous, very famous American painting. Um, who is the artist? We all know it. Edward Hopper, right? The person in the cafe. I think it's the woman in the cafe late at night. Just a very powerful image. It seems to be kind of a distant uh, cousin. So interesting take, so slightly different style. Looks actually a little bit similar to the previous style, uh, but let's, I brought up their other works here. So edition of 10, let's see if people are adopting. Kilam the Curator, who you also see uh, quite a bit on Tezos, Fluffhead Chaser. So here are the new style works. So a bit more painterly here. Interesting, hey? So, very interesting work from Dexter. And uh, as I always say, like the people have a short memory on these blockchains. If Dexter makes 20 more of these, everybody's going to forget almost about the previous work. So you can do that here. And I think that's great. I mean, Richard Prince, uh, who many of you know, famous contemporary artists, he criticizes the art scene a lot by saying, because he has different series. You know, he has his photo photos of the cowboys. He has his uh, nurses series that are very painterly. And he says how the art world always wants to put you into a box. And that, you know, he's like, I'll work on, you know, 
uh, you know, the Instagram series in the morning, and then I'll go over to the painterly nurse series in the afternoon. That's how I work as well. Like, and I don't worry about that. And he's saying, and he's saying, don't worry about that either. So anyways, before my computer collapses here, let's continue. En hag gluck. So after yesterday's show, their work sold out, I believe, those two purple ones. I think Uxine picked up one and then, yeah, then mayhem ensued. So there's a new one. Now you have to buy for 1666 and look. So a combination of Uxine and perhaps this show, maybe just Uxine. Uh, yeah, so this person who they had barely sold any yesterday's show is now doing fabulous. So that's wonderful. Nice work. Uh, Lewis Osborne with a new work, Unlucky Spin. Uh, this is an edition of 30. Offers are coming in at 15. So you get the sense a little bit that uh, Lewis Osborne's market has cooled off a little bit. Just a little bit. So he's still doing fabulously. He could probably still live from the art. But it's kind of a bit of a lesson in, you know, just if you're doing well now, maybe don't quit your day job just yet. Like you kind of want to have maybe a year of doing well. Hard to say. I mean, who's to say it's a gamble? Maybe not quitting your day job is the wrong answer sometimes. Um, so anyways, uh, he's still doing fabulously. But now you go, oh, could you live off of it? When, especially at Tezos at 80 cents or 85 cents. So interesting. Beautiful work, though. I mean, I love Lewis Osborne's work, especially the stuff on Super Rare. Uh, that second piece is one of my favorites. Uh, so Andre, Summer Blues Art, uh, he has a Genesis drop on Nifty Gateway. And he just kind of is going from victory to victory too. Very defined style. Again, this kind of illustrative style. Again, could hang in the sh same show as Lewis Osborne for sure. Also, yeah, open edition on Nifty Gateway. So the open edition trend continues. I wonder if it's starting to get oversaturated. But I mean, we just saw a $65,000 sale yesterday in eight hours. So with Delta Sauce. So maybe it's not. If anything, objectively, we have to say it's actually ramping up, right? With sales like that. Lewis Harriet, who I've never seen before. Uh, I just thought this was a nice work that went with our il illustrative section. Kind of fantasy, kind of surreal, kind of psychedelic. Uh, the scourge of an interpolated loom owned by Can't Fake Sig. So I don't know if this is a new or older work, a one of one, but cool work. So we show it here. Runetune is, uh, has an auction, and here he is. It's at 26. It's a one of one, uh, and this is an abstract work. And what is it used? Uh, the painting was created with the intention of using Chroma Depth 3D glasses to view. So if you want to get the glasses, you purchase here. So anyways, kind of reminiscent of the red and blues that you'd find. I mean, these aren't, but, you know, of the maybe the 3D comics that you had when you were a kid. Anyways, a beautiful work, which looks digital uh, and a beautiful work, abstraction, and kind of in, reminds me of the last Rune Tune work, too, which was of a person. Here you almost see some eyes. So anyways, at auction, let's just see, uh, for another three hours, and there are a couple of bids in. So it's still available. Uh, HM Tim, who I can't remember where I found this. It was someone's collection. So shout out to whoever that was. Trash TV, uh, one Tezos, uh, edition of 10. I think this is an awesome work. I was very happy to pick this up in Vaporwave colors, kind of reminiscent of those Runetune colors. A photography remix of an old TV in a trash pile. Very nice piece. One Tezos. So the green pastures are still out there. Continuing with the kind of retro tech, we have K Kurt Hustle Collective with a mobile phone character. I don't know who, th this is part of the KHC call center. Again, you could buy your calling card yesterday and here is the phone. So too much fun, editions of 10 and this looks basically sold out. And Bridget New York listing it for 50. And Kurt Hustle Collective has been doing very well. They were actually in the top 10 uh, sellers on Tezos just yesterday or the day before. So they're doing very well. Uh, quick shout out to Ailey, who of course does the uh, summaries there of the shows and totally appreciate that. And thank you so much, DJ Poco, your art DJ, Pokebelly, for featuring ASCII Vanitas Tulips on Artist Journal. 
So this is interesting. Uh, AI original image and black and white background variations through ASCII generator by Kinez Capita. And so I went to her page. We'll post raw alpha image and Unicode generator links below. Maybe, maybe can uh, Kazapata can speak to specs. So here is the original image. And here, now my ASCII Unicode image generator is online again. So Ile has posted Kinezkapta's uh, ASCII generator, if you follow me here. And here, Kinek Zapata. Thanks, Ile. I've been working for years with Unicode characters and the idea that text is visual and the idea of visual poetry like this. So here's an example. So one day I was talking with magic curator Doreen A. Rios, and I realized that I didn't have an ASCII to image generator, and that in one of them I can put my own selection of Unicode characters to make the image. So I went to the GitHubs and found it, and you can put your own character selection to make the generator. So anyways, all to say, here is an ASCII generator. If you're looking for one, find the tweet. And also, she has, or Connect Zapata has, uh, their own Unicode image generator on their website. So give Connect Zapata a follow and check out their replies in their tweets and you can find this tweet and this link. I was testing it out, it's pretty awesome. So you might wanna bookmark it if you're into ASCII. Continuing on, uh, Ed Marola with a very interesting as ever pixel artwork. I mean, is this pixel art? I mean, it is, but wow. Like, I mean, this is very experimental. Uh, all across in the very interesting frame here too. This kind of bird figure. There's a lot going on. Again, the same kind of palette, the wild kind of figure here. Uh, we have a lot of bold experimentation on this platform, don't we? And it's always, you know, there is a persuasion that comes with being prolific, right? I mean, if Ed Marola was releasing these once a month, I'm not sure it would be as persuasive, but because Ed Marola is releasing on an almost daily basis here, if not daily, uh, there is a persuasiveness that comes. Maybe it's just the repetition, but it also shows you see all the dynamics that are at work. And then you're perhaps, you know, more forgiving on a figure like this, because then you go, oh, well, this is on purpose. This person is experimenting, right? So very interesting, sold out from what I can tell here you know, has their collectors, look at this, sells out in how long? Uh, listed at 117, all gone 10 minutes later, 11 minutes later, so 128. So other people are feeling it too, bite by bit with a couple more nebulas. You know, if we had more time, I was looking at the James Webb telescope images, I was very tempted to show them here because we are into all visual culture here, but there's just too much in this episode. Anyways, a couple of one of ones available for 12 Tezos here in the uh, Planet Pixel ser series. This is the Needle Galaxy. So again, using retro tools, the uh, 1988 PC Paint 3.1 and Side Hustle with a one of one. I'm not sure if this sold, minted. <clears throat> this is minted, abstract composition number nine. I think I might have some earlier versions, uh, abstract compositions, I'm not sure. So side hustle with a one of one, always interesting. Again, the prolificness creates a persuasion there. If that was the first work, I'd be like, I'm not sure. This is, when you see the hundredth work, you go, oh, this person knows what they're doing. This is super interesting, right? So kind of a, a, you know, a word to the value of being prolific. And I say this as much to you as to myself, dear friends. Uh, NZFS, who we looked at yesterday, Origin and El Infinito, part of a series of robots dream about human emotion, just kind of more interesting experimentation with abstraction and pixels here. Uh, again, playing with this kind of random underneath or like the layers that don't seem to relate too closely in terms of the outlines. Edition of five available for 6.23 to this, and that is the mint price. Continuing on as we race through here, walk with the digital work. I wasn't sure what the reference was here. So I put it in our abstract area, inhale C4, dollar sign, dollar sign. So interest, interesting, one of one, hot market, uh, sold for 100 Tezos. So that's pretty cool. Good for walk, and that was released yesterday. Dan Control, with continuing kind of playing with these still lives, and I love his inventiveness. Again, prolific, 
right? The power of being prolific. Uh, here he's taking his lighter work and then putting them all over. This is, it feels to me like a Warhol type thing. And I love that, you know, like to me, that's like, I love that just as an art appreciator. I go, this guy's smart, you know, and he's putting, it's good for his market. He makes more money and it, why not? This is a nice composition. Why not reuse this lighter, right? Reserve of 0.15, I'm sure it'll go. The others have. Uh, also with this kind of gradients and abstraction here, Dmitry Martovsky mathematics series. So I just saw this in one of these tweet threads here and I thought it was just kind of interesting. Interesting abstraction here. So Dmitry Martovsky mathematics series, continuing on. Uh, massive work here by Sumi Rayusi, 10,000 pixels by 9,629. Uh, I believe this is called a digital collage. So I believe she makes this here and that this other work is AI. This is under Sumi Rayusi's banner, where usually, as far as I understand, she combines painting with AI rather than just the pure AI works, which she puts under the Sum uh, series, uh, banner. Let's call it that, uh, artist series. So I actually really like that idea. If I was to release AI, I would create a separate account because otherwise it gets kind of confusing uh, for the collectors. And I like to just keep it separated. I've seen people do that with Instagram accounts as well, where they'll have a separate AI Instagram account. Interesting idea. Anyways, uh, nice work from Sumi Rayusi. A lot of pathos there and just interesting combination and contrast between digital painting and AI. Now look at this strange thing. Uh, who it's always nice to check in on. Just notice how viral my work went with Concept Nikes. So I think Concept Nikes is an account here. Look at this. So there's his work. Concept Nikes is posting it from Strange Thing, like 30,000 likes on Instagram. So Strange Thing's work is just kind of uh, made to order for Instagram there. I am going to restart my computer next episode, guys, so you don't get the freezing as much. Um, but you're seeing everything here. So anyways, congrats to Strange Thing. Uh, more kind of AI and fashion. This is the Impossible Sneaker Series, or the Lost Sneakers Series by Sky Goodman. So edition of 10 for 14, pretty reasonable for a well-known artist like Sky Goodman. So again, combining AI and sneakers, and the kind of Impossible Sneakers. Very nice work, kind of again on a fashion tip here. And here, this is interesting, some AI collaborations, kind of again, messing with this whole AI and authorship debate and what is copying and everything. This kind of just confuses everything even more in a sense. I'm happy to represent our first AI collab with Amadova Marina, whose work we've shown. And here's Igor Tsaruk. So you can recognize the style here of Marina uh, Amadova Marina. So interesting piece here. Looks great. Uh, and yeah, I wonder how the AI collabs work. Maybe in the Twitter spaces tomorrow we'll find out. I guess you just give the image, you upload it, and then you start doing stuff with it uh, with prompts. I don't know. And here's Marie, Marina Amadova. Uh, I'm glad to tell you about our first collab with Turak Igor. So she shows her side or at least, uh, so you see, they're both tweeting about each other's work, but different works, okay? So isn't that interesting? And you see, you recognize the style of the two girls, almost like the twins, but slightly different. Super interesting results. Gonna go to auction, it looks like there. Here's an artist who I hadn't seen before, uh, LaForge. Maybe we have seen them before. Uh, just available on Foundation. Just kind of interesting experimentation here with AI, I believe. Uh, AI art, yes, 3008 by 3008. A dive into the hippocampus. Inner space, as J.G. Ballard likes to call it. Chili Preston with an interesting kind of surreal work here. Midjourney and Photoshop. Patiently awaiting, patiently awaiting the demise of my identity. Uh, available for five, edition of 10. So very interesting. We see the AI distortions here and almost like a right foot on a left foot and a left foot on a right foot and the person becoming a part of the wall. Again, these irrational results from the AI, I assume from the AI, maybe that's Photoshop. Surreal Situations is the name of the series by Shelley Preston. 
And this is Sum. So Sumi Reusi's AI account, a beautiful room here. You gotta love the texture. I think this is DALL-E. These distortions have a DALL-E feeling to them, don't they? So I thought a really rich kind of painterly room, room 35 from Sum. Low edition here, buy for five, so pretty reasonable. Edge Q with another one of these great, I picked this up, uh, great uh, AI kind of music, you know, mastering in the studio, you know, uh, but seeming looking like a 19th century uh, painting here. So very, very interesting from Edge Q, edition of five. Now it's 30. I think I picked that up for four. It had a mint price of four. So interesting. Nice work, Edge Q. And Kika Nicolela, who also did this, uh, who's working on fashion and AI. And so anyways, more experimentation with fashion and AI. And here, this looks like raw AI. And this is an addition of 10 for seven. And we are almost done here, folks. Polly Jojo, who's been making some interesting AI. So kind of a interesting, almost 19th century Victorian setting, looking at kind of more modern day TV shows, but kind of retro too. These are the Muppets, of course. So more of a 90s sort of thing. Chateau de Chenonceau, 1697. So mixing, mixing times with uh, AI and Photoshop. So just kind of these more surreal situations, you could say. Same thing here, you know, with uh, maybe a SpongeBob SquarePants, but in a 19th century or 17th century or 18th century here, 1723 setting from Polly Jojo. Low editions, low prices for you AI art collectors. And this was interesting, finally, will be merged. Uh, I, I had my big project in early February will be my first merged physical and NFT artwork in a solo exhibition in real life. I'm gonna show you some progress shots soon. Kindly check my one of one available on foundation. Just some interesting works here. So I don't know if this is combining uh, physical and digital art, but I just thought interesting work here. They are going, so I don't know if this combines. It kind of looks digital to me, but maybe they're still combining, which is why we put it at the ends, my friend. Thank you for joining me. I will restart my computer and hopefully tomorrow I see you on Twitter spaces. Come join. I'm gonna try and post your art for everybody that comes on stage. Until next time, my friends, take care.